Black is King is a masterpiece in the way that Beyonce is using her platform to elevate these black artists. She is the most mind-blowing, exquisite, disciplined, emotive, relatable performer that our generation has seen. Of course, he couldn't understand these things because he is a white male. This is kind of like what gaslighting feels like. Hi, happy B-Day, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are celebrating Queen Beyonce's birthday. I hope everyone is having such a fabulous B day. I'm having a little bit of a hard B day, you know? That happens every once in a while. We're about to watch Brown Eyed Girl the 15th time, and then you see this video suggested next to it, the problem with recognizing Beyonce as a creative genius. And, you know, usually I don't click on those types of things, but, um, I, I clicked on it, you know, I clicked on it. This man has like 2.2 million subscribers, so I thought, okay, maybe it's worth watching a little bit. I got into it, honestly. I gotta take a deep breath because his criticism of Beyonce doesn't really have any legs to stand on. He's literally scraping the surface of what Beyonce is. And I understand, old white man, I'm here to, to explain to you, and hopefully when I'm done with this video, you, you will see the genius that is Beyonce. So let's get into it. Walsh begins the video by calling her a mediocre pop star. Beyonce does not write her own music. She is only involved. Okay, and truly it takes an exceptional woman to be involved in the song that she is singing. She is a performer. That is where her genius shines through. Okay, I, I get it, like old white man. No one is claiming that Beyonce's genius is in her songwriting. It is the full package of Beyonce that we are interested in. Songwriting isn't her best strength. Her strength is knowing that and bringing in the songwriters to help her because she believes in herself. If she's not good at something, then she'll bring in the people who are good at it. I think that's genius. It is the way she incorporates her music into music videos, stage shattering performances, and the messages she stands for. She is the most mind blowing, exquisite, disciplined, emotive, relatable performer that our generation has seen. With the exception of Black is King and maybe some of the Lemonade songs, Beyonce makes music to perform it. She literally writes music with a huge audience in mind. Your face is all that I see. I give you everything, baby. Turn the lights out. She's writing all these songs knowing that she is a rock star and she will eventually perform them. Take all of me. I just want to be the girl you like. This is her craft. With the songs that Beyonce has written, like Independent Women, for example, I don't think this man understands what this song does for a girl. It, it speaks to us. Once I did a show and we sang all Beyonce songs and there was a girl there who had never sang like a whole Beyonce show before and after the show she was on fire. She felt so confident and she was like, Wow, this is what Beyonce does to you. Like, of course, he couldn't understand these things because he is a white male. And yes, when she's not writing a song, she'll bring on the people to help her write the certain song that she is not good at writing. What is wrong with that? And my absolute favorite line from this video. She's a good dancer, certainly, but even as a dancer, she isn't doing anything that other young pop divas can't do. Hmm. Not in my head like yeah, moving my hips like yeah, hands up to pay my Shake it off, shake it off, shake it off, play is gonna play, yeah, 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 shake it off, shake it off, head is gonna <laughs> Christmas in you. 
Michael Jackson was a genius dancer because he redefined the art form and moved in ways that seemed almost physically impossible. He reinvented dancing. Beyonce is not doing that. She isn't doing anything remarkable. Like what the actual? Beyonce literally stapled dancing in heels. Before that, divas would wear tennis shoes or like wedges. Beyonce literally showed us dancers that that was possible. You can do all the things, but in heels. I'm literally editing this right now and I just need to add this clip. Really? I just don't understand how he doesn't see that Beyonce's dancing is innovative and changing the game literally for every artist after her. After the Crazy in Love music video, Shirlene Quigley started the first heels dancing class in Los Angeles. After she danced with Beyonce in Crazy in Love, she changed what we believed what dance could be and now what do we see all over Instagram? It's these heels dancers it's these girls doing crazy things in heels Beyonce started that and I don't think she gets enough credit for that so yes Beyonce redefined the art form of dance you could argue that her music especially on this most recent album is judged as much by the accompanying visuals as by the songs themselves fine but the visuals are fairly standard for modern music videos there's nothing very special about it she delivers a product that is visually and audibly a perfectly acceptable entry into an already existent genre. So the visuals in Black is King, she's elevating the black culture in a way that isn't traditionally done in music videos. He misses the point entirely that Black is King is simply a pop album. Black is King is a masterpiece in the way that Beyonce is using her platform to elevate these black artists. This was a collaboration of African artists, images of African diaspora to raise them up. Beyonce is an international artist literally taking the hand of these African artists and saying, come over here with me. It's really hard for you to climb this ladder because of all the freaking white people over here and elevating them to the same level as her. New York Times says, Black is King is the story of Beyonce's black experience and the experience of many African artists as well. She is the only artist to exist at her level, so she can only tell her story, but she has gathered around her other artists that can help her to tell the story. It's not a pop album, it's a message to other black people to give back hope and prestige to her people. Just like how Mufasa was saying to Simba, remember who you are. She is saying this to them. Remember who you are. This is all yours. You are royalty. You are bigger. She didn't have to do this. She could have made an album with Post Malone or Kanye West. She could just keep singing, can you eat my Skittles? It's the sweetest in the middle. She doesn't collaborate much. And when she does, it's with intention. It just makes me really mad that he didn't, he didn't mention this at all, that this was the whole point of Black is King, and yet he's seeing the surface that it's a pop album. One of the most popular songs on her latest album, um, a jaw-dropping track, and the best on the album according to Billboard, is called Mood Forever, the number four ever, Mood Forever. And the lyrics are about what you'd expect from a song that uses a number in place of a word. Here, here's, here's Beyonce's opening verse, I'll just give you the, I'm not gonna sing it, here are the lyrics. I know my enemies prey on me, so pray for me. Tick, tick, wait on it. I'm keeping down my body count. I'm finessing like a trap bounce, a trap bounce. It's very hard to see how this rises to the level of masterpiece. I can't understand it, and it sounds like gangster rap, so it must be like. Of course, out of context, when a white male man says these words, it doesn't sound right. Who would say those things, right? This song is a celebration of Beyonce and Jay-Z's simultaneous rise to success in an industry previously dominated by white people. They are elevating hip-hop culture and black vernacular because of the suppression of black people throughout the all these years. They are being themselves, speaking in the way that they understand because the song is about black excellence. It's about them. They're showing off all the hard work they have 
been through. Because her and Jay-Z rose up to the top of the ladder. They rose up and they're there. And guess what? They're not changing. They're not going to mold themselves to any white people. Sh <laughs> they don't have to tiptoe around their black vernacular. They're not gonna like speak very nicely and have tea parties. I mean, they're gonna have tea parties, but different kinds. They are going to be themselves and they are going to talk the way they wanna talk, dress the way they wanna dress. Speaking in a way that maybe not all of us can understand because we're not black and we're not rich. They're still themselves. They're not gonna conform to any white way of speaking. They don't have to appeal to the masses. They create the masses. Just because they're part of this tax bracket doesn't mean they're gonna change. It's their mood forever. She's not that great. She is not a staggering genius. Her music is rather run-of-the-mill pop fare. It isn't particularly innovative. It certainly isn't insightful. Her lyrics and the messages they contain generally straddle the line between vapid and repugnant. In other words, she makes pop music. Nothing less, certainly nothing more. Again, with this statement, he's taking Beyonce out of context of who she is, of what her whole career has been about. The stamina she has in the music industry because just like every single job, you have to sell out a little bit. You have to give people what they want. And yeah, she makes pop music. Her music is always about empowering the unheard, about empowering women. Destiny's Child, she starts out writing songs about like men cheating, and then we get into independent women and women you can do it by yourself. This whole feminist movement. And now she's shifted to talking more about her African culture and black culture and elevating these people and these cultures because they have been suppressed for so many years. And she's doing it through pop music. She's not just writing songs about Steven down the road. She's writing songs that are popular and that have messages to them that empower the unheard. If you don't feel unheard, then maybe you don't feel this way about her music. I'm sorry, old white guy. He says that Beyonce's music is not innovative. When her fifth album dropped, out of nowhere. Now artists do that. She is constantly revolutionizing herself and taking herself up to new levels and challenging herself. The people of the 16th century in Italy, they could step into the Sistine Chapel, look up in wonder and feel themselves and their spirits drawn into a beauty that was and still is truly transcendent. This is quite different from the experience modern Americans have when they listen to Beyonce sing can you eat my Skittles? It's the sweetest in the middle. When I'm at a Beyonce concert, it is a transformative experience. And millions of other people around the world feel that we are transcending. Why does he discount all of our experiences? I'm sure there were people like him back in Michelangelo's day who didn't like Michelangelo's work. Don't discount my experience if this is the way I feel. This is, this is kind of like what gaslighting feels like. This is something that is changing my life, that's transforming me. Just go do your own thing. Like why put me down? for liking this kind of art. The art we choose to elevate the highest and praise the loudest is the art that will influence us and especially our children the most. Everyone who looks up to Beyonce wants to be better at what they do. They wanna be a better photographer, a better mother. She inspires you to be the best you could be at whatever is meant for you. What does it say that we elevate Beyonce's art in our culture? A lot of us want to feel empowered, and we're doing it through a black woman. I can only speak from personal experience, but I know other people feel this way, is that her music lifts me up and empowers me to move forward and to believe in myself. We are inspired by her confidence and her belief in herself, her knowledge that she is a queen and we are all queens as well. That's what her lyrics say. I want everyone to feel like this. She wants us all to feel this confidence, this boost of morale, to live in the moment and take control of your life, that you are bigger. I could ask the same thing about his art. What does his contribution to cancel culture say about our society? 
All right, you guys, I'm feeling a little hot. I'm gonna take off this IV park because it's like 80 degrees outside. I hope you all have a beautiful B day. I hope you enjoyed this video and please dislike the Matt Walsh video. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, go check out his video, see what you think. Tell me in the comments what you truly think. I put out a video every week. Please be sure to tune in. Thank you everyone and I'll talk to you later.